Welcome back to the story also rhymes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Still funny. You want to put a the in front of it. Yeah. Everything like Corey's the breakfast chips. Welcome back to. Welcome back. In three, two, one. Oh, I see. <laughs> three, two. <laughs> Welcome back to Story Also Rhymes. I'm Corey. I'm Lori. What are we talking about today? The first trip of the season. How you can get yourself ready to get out there. Yeah, uh, a lot of our friends ask us, what do I do? How do I get out there? The very first time they want to know what they, what they need to do, how they need to prepare to get out there. Also in a lot of Facebook groups that we follow, this is a huge question that people ask. How do I get started? What's the first trip that I should do? So if you've liked what you've seen before or you're, you're thinking this is going to be great and you're still not sure, just hit subscribe <laughs> anyway. Thanks for the comments and everything and we've enjoyed the community so far and it has very much helped us because we're here to we're here to learn, maybe inspire, we're sharing when we can, but thank you for, for teaching us, everybody out there who's helped us. So it's going to be a good season. Yeah. Hit subscribe now just in case your power goes out and you can't find this again, right? <laughs> okay. So. What was our first trip? Surprise Lake in the Grand Tetons. The grandest of Tetons. They're beautiful. Uh, so that was her, our first trip together, her very first trip. So I decided to pick one that was about five miles and 3,000 feet elevation gain. And we ended somewhere over 9,000 feet in elevation height. How did you like that? If you um, don't understand what happens to you after 9,000 feet, don't Google it. It's a fun experience. Um, well, we lived at sea level, and so. <laughs> so yeah, it was a great. It was a great hike. It was a lot of like this or like this, as switchbacks go. Um, but it was gorgeous. I love that every few switchbacks, I'd, I'd have to stop because it was you know full sun and hot, and I had a pack on my back. My first trip with a pack on my back. But it was beautiful, beautiful on the way up. And once we got up there, they don't call it Surprise Lake for nothing. It was just gorgeous. And that first to taking your boot off and your socks and getting your feet in the lake. So it, so was, it, paid it was a off great huge. trip. Yeah, absolutely. I would not do that to anybody you care about. Though. I, mean, I think that was, Whoa. that almost, that almost <laughs> knocked me out before I even started, but it was beautiful and it was worth it. So if I had someone giving us tips, that would maybe be a hot a, tip a, number hot tip number one appropriate height. <laughs> appropriate height. but we survived and we yeah, certainly loved it. good memories so why backpack right so there's a lot of reasons to backpack um, for one a lot of day hikers you get out there and you're staring at this beautiful lake and you gotta turn around and go home and you think man if i just had a tent out here could watch the sunset have a fire really enjoy myself. Yeah. So that's one reason. A lot of reason that I think people start is because they're day hikers and want to extend that trip. Um, also, it's hard to find camping. Last year, we just thought like, oh, we'll just leave on a Thursday and we'll go find a, a site somewhere. We're you know, just going to car camp. One of those first come first surf sites, they yeah. promise. Yeah, that, that are everywhere, right? Yeah. So we drove around for six hours, saw plenty of sights. And it was beautiful. It was a wonderful <laughs> six hour drive. We ended up 45 minutes from our house, <laughs> paying a guy to be able to camp on his property. And, but at least there was an outhouse there. It was I mean, beautiful. Like, like an actual porta potty. So I mean, apparently that, it was the, like totally glamping. Yeah, apparently the river was catch and release. And I found that out the second day. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so kind of know your place. Anyway, that it's so it's hard to find yeah. car camping s spots. A lot <laughs> of them are overcrowded now. I remember when I was young, it was pretty easy to get a spot places. Now you got to like six months out reserve yeah. them. We got some great friends that are going car camping with their kids. And she said in the course of a week, they're moving to three different campsites. So a good reason to backpack is you just got to push whoever's in the site out. If they're already there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, also, it's a pretty cool experience. Like, honestly, the surprise, yeah. like, getting yeah. up there for Lori, it was, it was, it had an impact on her. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's super cool to just carry what you need on your back, What right? you think you need. Yeah. You, you could probably wander into the woods for two days with nothing and survive. Yeah. Which is a good thing, which is a good thing to remember. You may be overpacking. <laughs> yeah. And probably the last thing, it does your mind and your body a whole yeah. lot of good uh, to get out there in the woods, out away from people. So... Uh, what is the structure? How are we going to go about helping them plan their first trip? What's the deal? Um, we're going to talk about gear, 
what, what you need to get yourself ready to go, how to pick a hike so that everybody's happy. <laughs> and um, the last thing was oh, how to overcome any obstacles you might have, yeah. things that just mentally you might be nervous about or unsure about. We're going to address those, even if you don't know what your obstacles are. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as equipment, uh, equipping yourself goes, essentially you need shelter, you need a sleep system, you need water, I would say a cook set, but honestly, uh, there's options out there where you don't even need to cook anything, right? You could bring Pop-Tarts and, and beef jerky and- Tuna packets. Tuna packets, so uh, you might not even need a cook set. But essentially, if you can drink, eat, stay warm, and stay out of the rain, you're pr in pretty good shape. And then obviously you need a backpack to carry it in. Where would they look for like a list of things to possibly consider putting in their bag? So up there in the little thing that magically pops up, uh, Lori's gear loadout. So she showed you everything that's in her uh, backpack except food and clothing. Uh, so that might be helpful for you as well. Um, also choosing a backpack. Uh, we have a, a video on that. You can look through our our videos, how to choose the right backpack. So uh, there's some resources there. Even the tent that we ended up choosing, it's a tarp tent, double rainbow. We do a little first impressions on, on that. We have a video for that. We like that. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, uh, there's plenty of options out there for shelter that are inexpensive. You know, EREI even has like a beginner's set that's pretty reasonably priced. So. Um, so look into that, just get gear. Don't worry about getting the best gear because uh, frankly, you don't know if you like this. <laughs> We're telling you you're gonna like it, but you don't know. Right? Well, and apparently part of the fun with buying gear is you always get to upgrade, you which you can go to our gear we're retiring. Perfectly good <laughs> gear that we're gonna replace. But no, just, you know, you don't, you don't your first car isn't your, your favorite forever car. So this right. is your first backpacking trip. So keep it simple. Yeah, just get stuff. That'll, that'll get you out there. My very first backpacking trip, I took an enormous sleeping bag that I just, that was pretty much everything that was in my backpack was my sleeping bag and part of a tent and some ramen packets. So <laughs> that'll get you up It there. can be that simple. It can be that simple. So uh, that's the deal. Second, uh, selecting your first backpacking trip. So um, one hot tip would be if you're a day hiker, a lot of those places that you're day hiking, mm -hmm. you can actually backpack and camp at those lakes and those rivers. Mm -hmm. So you're familiar with that. That's a super uh, handy thing to be familiar with something. You will already know where the sites are. One of the biggest uh, things that get me as I'm hiking up there and make me want to hike faster is what if there's only one spot <laughs> left, right? Like what if there's no spots once that I get sounds up there? Sounds relaxing. Right? So, <laughs> If you have an idea, yeah. if you're already familiar with a place, that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. um, next is like Facebook groups. Um, so like we belong to Idaho hiking and backpacking, Washington I backpacking, Pacific Northwest hiking, uh, hike backpacking in the Pacific Northwest. Those are all groups and they're all there to, you know, debate whether you should carry <laughs> a gun on the trail or whether putting Karen's up are okay. But once you get past all that, they have great suggestions as to uh, <laughs> different hikes and different backpacking trips in your area. So that's super helpful. Now, what we use the most yeah. is what? All trails. All trails. All trails. All trails. And it's great because you get real time reviews from people that have recently hiked it. So if you're in an area where there's snow, they'll tell you if there's snow, they'll tell you how the trails are, tell you what they found, if the wild goats are still up there digging up your whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So the comments on all trails are super yeah. helpful. And you can even go back to like this time last year and see what it was like just to kind of get a rough and Can idea. they download the map for offline use yep. while they're hiking? Yep. So if you want to have your map with you on your phone, you can have it. And see how far it goes. We recommend also carrying, you know, a paper map just because technology can fail. But anyway, that's another. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole other YouTube thing. Stay okay. tuned for that. Okay. Um, okay. Also pictures. They'll have pictures, um, it shows, uh, so you can get excited. Um, shows you the elevation that you're going to do so you, you don't get surprised um, by 3,000 feet. I knew it was 3,000 feet. I you're just, just not a share. I'm not a share. <laughs> so that, um, 
the comments. So one of the things I mentioned was not knowing if there's going to be a spot up there. So in the description in All Trails, it tells you how many campsites are there. But a lot of times in the comments as you read them, people will say, well, there's actually five or there's actually um, less spots. Uh, so it's just su such a wonderful resource to help you and you can select the area that you want to hike. So for us, if we were going to Lolo National Forest, we, I, can, I can pick that area and I can actually look and see the different trips that are there. Uh, so you can realistically look right around your house what yeah. places there are. Mm -hmm. So you can do something close, close yep. and easy, get there first thing in the morning. Yep. The most important thing I think to consider when you're looking at a backpacking uh, uh, hike, overnight pack, is whether or not you can have fire. Some years there's a fire ban. Um, we got to enjoy a fire ban on our first hike, so and it, the wind was very cold. So we enjoyed a nice evening in our tent before the sun went down because it was just too cold to be out. But um, that might be something to consider, depending on the time of year, if that's a, if that's important to you, because that's pretty much what you do um, when the sun's going down before the stars come out. You get your fire on, so yep. maybe that's something to consider. Yeah. So any of the the national forest sites will help you with that and tell you those things. Um, in the comments of all trails, it'll help you see if places are crowded a lot. So you can really dial in and pick the place that you want. Uh, and you know what? Decide how many miles. If you just want to go a mile or two, that's okay, right? I mean, especially for I your first one. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the idea is just getting out there. And realistically, not a lot of people are, are camping a mile or a mile and a half in. Mm -hmm. uh, so you probably have a campsite to yourself. So just maybe some thoughts on that. So what was the third? The third thing to consider is any obstacles that you might personally be thinking about. Whatever it is, you know what it is. When, when, when you think of overnight backpacking, you probably have something in your mind and you go, I don't want to deal with that. So we addressed a few of mine. I had three concerns when we started this. Um, one was being able to keep up. That was my biggest one. I don't like ruining people's time. Um, being comfortable at, at the campsite. I don't want to hike for however many miles or hours and then sit on my butt on the dirt. That didn't sound like fun. <laughs> and then the third thing was hygiene. I had concerns about how do you stay clean? Do you have a source of water nearby? Like what do I need to bring? So whatever yours are, somebody has felt it and addressed it most likely in a blog or a YouTube, a channel. YouTube channel. Or maybe you had my three fears and you want to check out our video where I discuss. I'll post that up there as well. <laughs> like how I got over it. But whatever those are, I think it's good to look at them ahead of time, do what you can to prepare and then whatever happens, happens. It's not going to be perfect. Yeah. So, so, yeah, for me, that's a part of it. That's a part of this whole process with planning your first trip is making sure that you've, you've set yourself up to have a good time. Don't go, I mean, if you're like me, I don't blindly walk into stuff and just have a great time. I typically do a bit of planning. Now, if you're the person that has a great time, no matter what you're doing, don't look at your fears. Just get out there. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. Okay, so here was my surprise question for you. <laughs> what, um, what piece of equipment do you have now that you wish you would have had on your first backpacking trip? Chair. Hands down? Chair. Yeah? Um, what else was there? There's never had everything else. I had a pad. I had, I was warm. So a backpacking chair. Chair, for sure. I mean, and that, but that's just me. Or the, um, really we have a very thin, it's not a full size, it's like a half of a twin size sheet. And I'll sometimes throw that out. And then I can at least stretch. That's good for stretching, being on the ground after a long, if the hike's long. So no, a chair full, somewhere to sit. Let's broaden that, somewhere to sit. So if you have a hammock, great. Chair, great. Even like a small baby blanket that's thin, it's light that you want to bring. Somewhere to sit on the ground. <clears throat> I would definitely say chair. Yeah. Because you can sit around that fire. That's so important to have. Sit and have your cup of coffee, yeah. wait for the, that to happen. So that would be ours. Kyle hates hiking, would disagree. But, but Kyle know. might also hate sitting, <laughs> so I like sitting. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Kyle. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's the deal. So. Did this make this easier for you? In watching this, do you think, okay, I can attack these things now. This really is all you need to worry about. Having the right stuff, knowing where you're going, and not being a big chicken once you get up there. Yeah. So put in the comments if you want us to expound on something. Um, or... Um, if you if you have any other questions about it that we didn't address, or yeah, or if we, or if we, yeah, did we miss something? Yeah, did we miss something? Last something note. you think we should yeah. should have considered. Otherwise, hit like. If you made it this far, your power didn't go out, but still hit subscribe. <laughs> 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 Until next time, I'm Corey. I'm Lori. See you later. I think it's good. What do you think? I think it's good. Sit, sit, sit how you can sit. 
and journals. So you're, so you're cocked forward, and I'm not. Buffy. Well, I just don't want anyone to see my belly. <laughs> I think you have to talk up. Speak up. Why? Because this thing muffles it a little okay. bit. Right. So we gotta project okay. a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. You don't look ready. You look grumpy. People are gonna notice. <laughs> I don't care if people notice I'm grumpy. I'm a real person. Okay. I'm the talent. Mm-hmm. <laughs>